we gather this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we gather to worship. Our call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Talk of all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this morning for this opportunity to gather together to worship. We ask, Lord, that your spirit would come and fill this place, fill our hearts, draw us to your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting. Looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his or her own way. There's a recognition in the scriptures that we aren't the people that God intended us to be, and it is to our advantage to agree with him about his diagnosis of our condition. Let's take a few moments together and confess our sin. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, yet again your spirit has convicted our hearts. Your grace has generated good grief, and your kindness now leads us to repentance. There is no other God like you, one who is so holy, so just, and yet so merciful, so welcoming, and so eager to redeem, so patient and overflowing with unfailing love. Hear our confession this morning. We confess caring too much about what others think of us. Their approval is too important. Their disapproval is too, too painful. We confess that it's easier for us to share gossip with friends than it is to share the gospel with those who are strangers to your grace. We confess that we often manipulate people for our advantage rather than serve them for their good and for your glory. We confess bringing, binging on fear and coddling our worries rather than feasting on grace and feeding our faith. We confess hoarding our brokenness and weakness, rather than letting friends enter into our pain and help us carry our burdens. We confess indulging in irritation and justifying our resentment, rather than forbearing with others and loving them as Jesus loves us. God, in your grace, have mercy on us. And now may Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom which cannot be destroyed, may he indeed forgive our sins May he open our eyes to his truth. May he strengthen us to do his will and give us the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, on this March morning, we are grateful for your pursuing heart. May we take our joy as seriously as you do. In response to Paul's question to the Galatians, what has happened to all your joy? There's a wide range of possible answers. Some of us suffer from chronic gospel amnesia, forgetting who we are in you, by you, and for you. Some of us keep fertilizing the roots of our bitterness in our hearts with miracle grow, poisoning our joy with resentment and anger and unforgiveness. Some of us listen to our fears and worries. We pay more attention to what the media tells us than what your word tells us. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to us by your Spirit's voice, declaring to us that we are children of Abba's delight, Others are exhausted from the price of loving well or the drains of doing ministry. 
Some are paralyzed by the condemning accusations of the devil, the consummate faith thief and joy robber. Others have been way more preoccupied with the chaos in our world than the consolation of your enthronement. For each of these scenarios, the resolution is the same. We need a fresh heart connection with you, Lord Jesus. In you, we have full forgiveness, perfect righteousness, a sovereign king, a most loving bridegroom. Jesus, renew, refresh, and rejoy our hearts. Stun us again with the wonders of your love and the sufficiency of your grace. And now together as God's people, we pray as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear God, we thank you this day for this opportunity to share your word with your people. Lord, we ask that you will remove self out of the way so that you and you alone will get the glory. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining in for worship today. Though we are not physically together, we are spiritually connected in thought and in prayers. And for this time that is ours to share, I want to draw your attention to the book of Micah. Micah, chapter 6. And I want to focus your attention on verse We find in the book of Micah that even in the midst of warnings and judgment, we find a call for repentance, a message of hope for restoration and salvation. God has pleaded his case with Israel and Israel has been found guilty. Their guilt is plain, and they cannot deny. It's too great even to be excused. And so they express their desire to be at peace with God. They are inquisitive, inquiring what they might do to be reconciled and restored back to God. In Micah chapter 6, verse number 8, we hear God giving instructions to Israel concerning what is required of them in order to restore back their relationship with God. Verse 8 says, He has shown you, O man, what is good and what the Lord does require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. In this scripture, we are informed of three requirements that the Lord requires. The first requirement is to do justly. It suggests that a proper relationship with God also involves a proper relationship with others. Being fair one 
to another. This simply means that we are to remain honest in all that we do. The second requirement is to love mercy, which means to cherish, to show compassion, reflecting the faithfulness of God. One translation says, to treasure the Lord's gracious love. And so can I suggest to us today that as we prayerfully and patiently pass through this crisis that has plagued our land, that we treasure the Lord's gracious love. Let us take time to cherish the things that matters most. Let us take time to show compassion, helping those who need help the most. And lastly, let us take time to draw closer to God. With all that has been going on in these past days, it was during my devotional time that I was simply reminded that we are still in the season of Lent. Lent is the season when the people of God and the body of Christ are called to search ourselves and examine ourselves. It's during Lent that we are challenged to grow deeper in our relationship with Christ and to be drawn into a closer walk with God. And as I thought about that, I could not help but to think that maybe God has allowed this crisis to draw us closer to him. Maybe God has allowed this crisis in order to put our focus back on him. Maybe, just maybe, God has allowed this crisis so that we, the people, can meet the requirements of walking humble with him. The end of verse 8, it says to walk humbly with your God. We are to walk humbly with God. We are to walk carefully with God. We are to walk thoughtfully with God. We are to commit ourselves to live in submission to God. Submission. That word, submission, it means to yield to the authority of. And see, when we are yielding to the authority of God, it requires us to trust in him and to be obedient to him. One songwriter puts it like this. He says, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and all who trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Maybe you will understand it better if I say it like this. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, 
Oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, for grace to trust him more. We are to live in submission to God. Trust in him. Obeying him. And walking humbly with him. First Peter chapter 5 verse 6. It says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time, he may exalt you. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. I close today in hopes of causing you to consider the requirements. I challenge today each and every one of us to examine ourselves in order to see where we are when it comes to meeting the requirements. Where do you fall on the scale when it comes to doing justly? Where? Do you fall on the scale when it comes to loving mercy? Ultimately, where are you at in your walk with God? And if you're listening today and you want to receive Christ as your Savior, we offer Christ to you. For well, the word of God lets us know that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ died for our sins and rose again, then we shall be saved. We pray God's blessings on you. And we pray that heaven smiles upon you. For in all that we do, let us remember that it is God who gets the glory. is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness that endureth thine own dear presence
wants to cheer and to guide, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Listening carefully, Jesus was asked once by a teacher of the law, what is the most important thing? And Micah and Ellis this morning gave us an answer to that question. To love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. In Micah's terms, love our neighbor as ourself is to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God, as Ellis has called us to do this morning is to throw ourselves on his mercy, to submit to his will and our lives as he is Lord of all. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you and remain with you always. Amen.